calling State Farm. If you have questions about an existing claim, press 1. I have to figure out where I'm going to stay. I have to work during the week. I have dogs. I can't stay long term in a hotel. I'll get back to YouTube as soon as I can. But right now, just pretty shaken up and ready for a little break. So. Remember this girl? She's about to look very familiar. This sucks. I will start this by saying no, I still don't regret buying a cheap Chinese diesel heater even though this is the second one that I'm on. Um, I knew this would happen. I'm okay with it happening. I am I could literally buy 10 of these before I could buy one of the expensive ones which honestly I hear that those break just as much. Maybe not just as much but they still break pretty often. So. What's the point, you know? You're gonna have to fix it anyway. I'm getting a different code this time. Um, so it's not the, what's it called? What that happened last time? Glow plug. Um, I'm getting an E8 error, which means it's a problem with fuel. So a couple things it could be, there could be air in the fuel line. It could be carbon buildup, which I'm leaning towards that being the answer because I do like to run it at low settings, which they say you shouldn't do, but don't care. Um, so from what you just saw, I removed the exhaust pipe and it's black, but like, I feel like it's supposed to be black. Like I don't see anything. There's nothing blocking it. Um, so it doesn't feel wrong that it's black, right? I can't get to the combustion chamber without taking the entire heater apart. And if you followed along in the last adventure of my heater breaking, um, I would have had to do that to replace the glow, pl glow plug. Glow plugs are only like 20 bucks, but I was stuck in Utah in the middle of winter storm Ophelia, which was <laughs> pretty wild. So I don't care about tearing this $120 heater apart to try to save myself that much money. My time is worth more than my money. I will preach that until the day that I die. So I am going to try to drain the fuel line and prime it. Um, if it doesn't prime, that tells me it's the fuel pump. If, if that's not the case, if it's pumping fine and I get the air bubbles out, that is a problem with the combustion chamber. And I'll just replace the whole thing again because it's easier to pop that unit in and reconnect everything than it is to tear it apart and try not to break stuff that I'm probably going to break anyways. So that's the plan of attack. I got busy reconnecting the exhaust pipe, which I was so sure was in frame, but obviously wrong. Oops. After that, I disconnected the fuel line from the heater and set it up to drain right back into the container it came from. Okay, 
Interesting, there's no fuel. Just what's on my hand. Nothing. Couple drops coming out. It's also fighting gravity right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna prime it. Check that. There are a lot of things that make solo van life a challenge, but something I never thought would be added to that list was priming the fuel line and watching to see if it worked at the same time. In order to prime it, you have to hold two buttons down inside the van, and I obviously can't be in two places at once, so I used my camera and zoomed in and then went and watched the playback. And as it turns out, the fuel pump was working. Having checked the exhaust pipe, fuel line, and the fuel pump, the only thing left to do was test the heater. If, after turning it on, the heater produced a thick white smoke, that means it was not fixed and the problem was most likely due to carbon buildup in the combustion chamber. So, based on the video, <laughs> what do you think? Did I fix it? No. Okay, basically what it's gonna do now is it's gonna pretend to run for a little while while I watch white smoke blow out from under the van and eventually this is gonna stop saying H4 and it's gonna say E8, which tells me my combustion chamber is full of carbon buildup and I need to replace the whole unit. Voila, E8. What do you think, Penny? A little frustrating? Yeah. While frustrated, I didn't feel defeated. I knew replacing the heater unit was gonna be a pretty easy task, and at this point in the week, I really didn't feel much worse than like, meh, if that's a feeling. Still being a good sport, I made dinner and enjoyed what would end up being potentially my last normal week in the van, maybe forever. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes Falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. Even if the sky is falling down. We left this campsite on a Friday afternoon, just in time for a cold front to pass through. The weather had consistently been in the 50s this week, which means the van stayed pretty warm. But with cold weather creeping in and no heater to keep us comfortable, it was time to dodge the potholes and make our way to lower elevation and find a solution for the heater. Or so I thought that's what would happen. Thank you for calling State Farm. If you have questions about an existing claim, press 1. To report a brand new claim, press 2.
You will now be transferred to a representative that will help you. Yeah, um, I had a little situation come up, and I wasn't sure to... Okay. All right, sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. Remember at the beginning of this video when I was like, Broken heater? Psh, no big deal. Yeah, I wish I could go back to that moment and just embrace the fact that I had a van that was running. <laughs> oh, wow. I've been crying nonstop. My face is so swollen. We got a hotel last night. Um, this morning, I called a tow truck. Good news and bad news. The good news is this should be covered by warranty because my van only has 34,000 miles on it. So I'm still in the bumper to bumper to warranty. Um, the bad news is, although I haven't actually spoken to a dealer yet, based on all of the websites and the online service scheduling feature, the earliest appointment is October 18th. And today is October 8th. So that means I have to find lodging for at least 10 days. The mechanic that I am at today has been kind enough to let me sleep in their parking lot tonight. <sighs> I appreciate that so much. I mean, obviously I can't move the van. So I have a lot of questions to get answered tomorrow. Hi, um, my name is Erica. I have a few questions. I only have 34,000 miles on it. I am hoping and assuming that that should be covered under the manufacturer warranty. Um, but is there any way that you guys would be able to get it in any earlier than the 18th? Um, if you were able to drop it off with us and leave it with us, then we would uh, try to work it in between appointments. Okay. Um, here, let me get you down to our truck and fleet shop. Okay. It might be, have a better uh, date to give you. One moment. The person at extension two sit and key. If I look like I got hit by a truck, it's because I'm kind of feeling that way. The last week has been horrible. Well, yeah, just horrible. Um, I found myself trying to film everything that was happening and failing because like, this is not my job. <laughs> I do this because I enjoy it and it's really hard to hit record during the really hard times. Um, so there are bits and pieces. I know that people enjoy seeing the hard times, not because they like want to join in the misery, but because it's real. Um, but I will just do my best to catch you up on what just happened. Last Saturday, I was driving north of Denver and I heard something pop in the engine and then just continue to pop, 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 pop. Um, I was on the interstate, which was not a great place to be. Got out of the van, checked the tires, everything looked okay. So I coasted down to the next exit, which fortunately was where several hotels were. And I could see that a belt um, had broken and was all kinds of crazy stuff under the van. So I spent the night in a hotel feeling sorry for myself, stressed, I did find a mechanic that was open on Sunday. I had the van towed to the first mechanic. 
had a huge ordeal because they wouldn't let the dogs in the tow truck so then I had to beg an uber driver to let my dogs get in her car and I graciously tipped her $20 because she did not want them in her car and that's her right but like I was what am I gonna do so the first mechanic said that power steering pump fluid pump broke causing the belt to break and wrap around the CV axle so those three things needed to be replaced so I had the van towed the next day to the closest dealer and that's where the fun really started I called the dealer multiple times not asking them to get me in any earlier but just trying to ask them can you give me a ballpark for how long it may take to get these parts in and for me to get my van back because I have to figure out where I'm gonna stay I have to work during the week I have dogs I can't stay long term in a hotel because my dogs bark at everything and trying to get Penny out of a hotel without crossing paths with another dog is a nightmare so it was either gonna be get a rental car and drive the dogs back to my mom's house 16 hours away or an Airbnb for I have no idea how long I dropped the van off Monday um, I still had no idea how long it was gonna take I got a rental car and an Airbnb through today yeah Saturday so it's been officially a week now um, luckily and frustratingly at the same time the next day the dealer called me and said I'll have your van ready this afternoon so when he told me that I said you know kind of hard for me to swap out the rental car so I'll pick it up Friday after work if that's okay he said that's fine but of course all bad things happen in threes so first we have the heater then we have the breakdown um, so let's get to number three when I picked the van up he gave me the printout of everything that was wrong and basically what happened I'm gonna sound really dumb saying this because I don't know anything about cars um, but some of these pulleys that run the belt I guess um, got off track which caused the belt to break and damage my alternator as well as my axle they replaced the alternator they replaced two pulleys a belt and the axle but when I picked the van up right above me I had an onion in the cabinet and I looked in in the cabinet it was actually sitting like in a measuring cup and I saw mouse poop I, I know that there wasn't one in the van when I dropped it off but because it sat at the dealer for a week with no activity in parking lot with a million other cargo vans there is I would say an infestation in my van um, I've had my van back for a little over 24 hours now and in that 24 hours I have caught not one not two not three four five six or seven I have caught eight mice in this tiny van I am disgusted I am exhausted I feel like everything in here needs to be wiped with bleach um, or just as I like to say when I'm frustrated roll the whole van down a hill so I have made the decision to go home and regroup the only thing I can compare this experience to is when you're in a flight with horrible turbulence and you're terrified and you get off the plane and you're just so thankful to be on solid ground again I need to get solid ground I'm fine with a broken heater breaking down on the interstate terrifying obviously you know going into van life that that's a possibility but you don't know how it's gonna impact you until it happens and I thought I was a lot tougher than I am 
I do think I, I held it together pretty well until I got to the hotel. It's, it, it was really scary and I guess I'm not quite as tough as I thought I was. Um, so anyone who wants to say it happened to you six times and you didn't cry, I'll be the first to say you are better than me. You are stronger than me. Congrats. Don't bother leaving a comment. Go on about your business. With that being said, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't know what's next. There are three options. Option one is that I keep the van and I keep van lifing. Um, I've been saying for a while that I'm very uncomfortable in the van and I'm really thinking about getting something else, but I also want to make smart financial decisions. Option two is um, that I sell the van and I get an apartment somewhere. Option three is probably to buy a truck and a camper. I want to do what's right for me and I know that I need space. I don't know that I am going to be happy if I continue in the van. I don't know. I don't know when my next video will be. I just don't know. I drove 10 hours today. I have another seven to drive tomorrow to get to my mom's house. I'll get back to YouTube as soon as I can. But right now, just pretty shaken up and grossed out and ready for a little break. So thank you for everyone who has stuck in <laughs> for the duration of me talking about what happened. Um, and me and Charlie and Penny will be back when we're back. <laughs>